So now we want to talk about what exactly is going on at that nuclear facility and that reactor. And for that, we're going to turn to Dr. Michio Kaku. There's so many questions about what just happened. What, what does it mean, though? What is the latest that you've heard? Well, this could be a Chernobyl in the making. We are now going into uncharted territory. We are thinking the unthinkable. Think of a car out of control without brakes, and then your radiator explodes. That's the situation we have here, a runaway car that has no brakes, no emergency core cooling system, and now apparently a steam hydrogen explosion has blown the radiator off. Now they were depressurizing the reactor just a few hours ago. It looked as if they were within a hair's breadth of bringing it under control. But then a steam hydrogen explosion took place, four workers got injured, and all hell is breaking loose. Well, when you hear that term, a Chernobyl in the making, it's really scary. We do have a map this morning of the evacuation zone. It's 20 kilometers, 12 miles. Uh, how important is it to get out of that area and how, how far away is safe? Well, right now, the reactor itself, the vessel, seems to be intact. The prime minister just announced that the vessel still seems to be intact. At Chernobyl, the vessel and the roof blew off simultaneously, and 25% of the core, the uranium core, blew into the atmosphere. Here, we don't know how much core damage there is. That's the big question mark. But if there is core damage and radiation starts to leak out, 12 miles may not be enough. The winds don't stop blowing at 12 miles. The winds just keep on blowing. And if we go inside the core of this reactor, what exactly are they most worried about? The core is roughly 12 feet tall, super hot uranium that has to be covered with water at all times. Apparently, maybe some of the core is being exposed. At that point, temperatures rise rapidly to 5,000 degrees. Uranium core begins to splinter and melt. Radioactive gas starts to shoot out of the reactor, and that's the China syndrome. And so we're worried that we could be in the initial stages of core damage and core melt. Okay, so in a worst case scenario, what kind of risk is posed to people who live nearby? We're not talking Hiroshima. We're not talking about radiation burns over people's bodies. We're talking about a colorless steam cloud coming out of the reactor containing cesium, strontium, iodide in radioactive form that then drifts downstream into people's homes, lungs, into your clothing, into your hair. And that in turn could cause lung cancer. It could cause a thyroid cancer, leukemia. At Chernobyl, we're still seeing the effects of that accident, and that took place in 1986. We're still seeing people dying of that reactor accident. And given that there are still so many unknowns, we know that they expanded that perimeter as evacuation. Is even 12 miles, in your opinion, sufficient at this point? The winds don't stop blowing at 12 miles. I would, I would say as a safety precaution, just as a precaution, people should get out to perhaps 20 miles, given the fact that we have a situation that is not yet under control. That's the worrisome factor. We don't know the extent of core damage yet. I know you're a physicist and not a physician, but, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong on that, but the, the, it, what is, how can you tell if somebody has radiation poisoning and is there any effective way to treat it? Well, if I was a reporter going into that danger area, first of all, I would carry a Geiger counter because I want to know exactly what's out there. Radiation is invisible. We don't have any sensors that can detect radiation. You have to have a radiation sensor, and you have to then understand that some of it gets into your lungs, where it could radiate your lungs for years at a time, causing lung cancer. Thyroid cancer could occur because radioactive iodine comes out. Radioactive strontium comes out. That accumulates in the bone, and you can also have leukemia as a consequence. So there's a whole list of, of medical effects caused by radioactive accidents like this. And when folks at home hear the term meltdown, it sparks a lot of fear. What exactly does a meltdown constitute? The meltdown is when the core of uranium, which is roughly 12 feet tall, weighs 100 tons, super hot core, its cooling water starts to drop. At that point, the metal starts to begin to melt at about 5,000 degrees and starts to splinter. At Three Mile Island, about 90% of the core was uncovered, and the core splintered, and it looked like a bowl of granola when we actually took pictures of the core at Three Mile Island. At Chernobyl, the reactor exploded. The core melted, got shot right through the ceiling. About 25% of the core shot into the roof and uh, caused enormous uh, radioactive damage throughout the whole area near Kiev. There are so many unknowns about what's going on at that nuclear facility and that reactor. Specifically, when you hear word uh, of all of these aftershocks, 6.0 aftershock, how is that affecting uh, the understanding of what's going on there at the reactor? The danger is that a secondary aftershock could push this damaged reactor over the tipping point. 
We're talking about a broken pipe. We're talking about leaking this very important cooling water out of the core, exposing the core. And remember, they were trying to depressurize it. Think of a pressure cooker. They were trying to relieve the pressure on this reactor, which was, was building up pressure 50% above design level. And apparently they <laughs> let, let, the, let the lid off too quickly and a steam hydrogen gas explosion blew the, the building. So it means that the reactor is basically unstable yet. They don't have it under control. And that's what's worrisome. How much danger is there for continuing aftershocks in this kind of environment? The aftershocks could go on for days. 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 And just remember that it doesn't take much to tip a broken reactor into the meltdown zone. And that's the danger that we face here. So now it's just basically a race against time to stabilize the reactor uh, before we see the further Engineers are keeping their fingers crossed. It's a race against time. Because on one hand, the reactor is degrading. On one hand, pressures are building up, temperatures are rising, water levels could be dropping. On the other hand, we have aftershocks. The reactor is weakened. Pipes could break right open. And if that happens, we're talking about a China Syndrome Chernobyl accident. And remember that Chernobyl started with a hydrogen steam explosion, just like what just happened a few hours ago at that Japanese plant. We could be having deja vu all over again. But Chernobyl did not start from an earthquake. That's right. Even scarier aftershocks have to worry about. Dr. Kaku, thank you. We appreciate it.